Okay, so we are just finding the slope between these two random points. I've already said that something weird happens this time. What is that weird thing that happens? I don't know. Anybody have an answer yet? What are you getting here? Everything works the same way, right? This is still just an X and a Y. This is still an X and a Y. This is just my first point, so I put little ones. This is my second point, so I put little twos. So if I'm going to pop it into the slope formula, I know where everything goes. So Y2, let's say, is just 4. So I'd write 4 minus, and then I look, what's Y1? Oh, it's negative 6. Down on the bottom, I have X2 is 2, so I write 2 minus, and then X1, oh, is 2. All right, so up top, I have 4 minus negative 6. So that minus a negative turns into 4 plus 6. And then on the bottom, I have 2 minus 2, which is just 0. So I get 10 over 0. Huh. Well, that's weird. <coughs> what is 10 over 0? It's not undefined. Yes. It is not zero. So if any of you were thinking, oh, 10 divided by zero is just zero, I'm sorry, but you are 100,000% incorrect. Marissa had it spot on. That is undefined. When you have zero in the denominator, that is undefined. Okay? You can get a slope of zero, and that would just be having a zero in the numerator. Now, what in the world does this mean? What does this look like? How do you, what, do you, what are you talking about, an undefined slope? What does that look like? Well, let's take a look. If I were to just sketch these two and see where they are. So here's a coordinate plane, right? So 2, negative 6 would be somewhere, let's put it like there, 2, negative 6. And then I'd have 2, comma 4. Look at what this line looks like. Look at what it is. It's a perfectly straight up and down line. <gasps> it's just a perfectly vertical line. So if you have a line that's perfectly vertical, straight up and down, we say that it has an undefined slope. Okay? So vertical lines. Remember, that's up and down. Vertical lines have undefined slopes weird right vertical lines undefined slopes now let's do another example let's put a at oh uh, i don't know negative three uh, 1, and let's put B at 5, 1. If I want to find the slope between these two. Everybody take a minute this time. Find me the slope here. Did you get an answer? Remember, here's an X, here's a Y, here's another X, another Y. That's just my first point. That's just my second point. Okay, great. Pop everything in where it goes. Y2 is 1 minus. Let's see what Y1 is. Oh, 1 on the bottom. X2 is 5 minus. What's X1? Negative 3. So what do I get? Up top, 1 minus 1 is just 0. On the bottom, 5 minus a negative 3 turns into 5 plus 3. So now I have 0 over 8. I have 0 in the numerator this time. What does that become? What is 0 divided by 8? Zero. That really is 0. Yes, this really is 0. If you have 0 in the numerator, you just get 0 as your answer. That's so interesting. So here, my slope is literally zero. 
what does this line look like? I'm sure you figured it out by now, but if I did the same thing, if I just sort of sketched where these are, negative three, one would be somewhere right about there. So there's negative three comma one, and then five comma one would be somewhere right about there. So you can see that this one is a perfectly horizontal line. So horizontal, and that's side to side, like the horizon, right? Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. One thing that I kind of want you to erase from your, I don't know, I don't want you to ever say that a line has no slope. What does that mean? Does that mean zero or does it mean undefined? I don't know. It's not clear. So try not to ever say something has no slope. I know sometimes uh, that gets taught, but it's really confusing because what does that even mean? All right. So we're either going to say lines have a slope of zero or they have an undefined slope. So those are our two options. Or it's a regular slope like we had on our fast five, right? Maybe it's just some random fraction. Um, or maybe it comes out to be a whole number. So it's either going to be some regular number or undefined or zero. All right. So, um, by the way, just a couple helpful tips and tricks here. If you forget, if you have a zero in your fraction and you can't remember, oh, is it zero in the numerator that's zero or zero in the denominator that's zero? Say you can't remember, your calculator will help you. So if I do, remember our first example, we had zero in the denominator. So if I just do 10 divided by zero, watch what my calculator does. If you do 10 divided by zero and I go ahead and, ahead and hit enter, I get an error right away. You can't divide by zero, just says error, right? If I do it the other way though, we had zero divided by eight. Your calculator will give you the answer. Zero divided by eight really is zero. And I know every calculator is different. So let me just grab, I have another one here. Let's see what this one does. Okay, let's try this one. So same thing, if I do 10 divided by zero, see what happened? That E popped up over there. That E stands for error. Okay, this one's not, I like the other one better that it literally gives you a big screen and says you can't divide by zero. But if you have an E popping up on your screen, that's telling you there's an error because you're not allowed to do that. You can't do 10 divided by zero, it's undefined. So if you see an E pop up, that's how you know it's undefined. And if you go the other way, what was the other one we did? Zero divided by eight. That one, you'll see, I will not get a, see, it just spit out zero. I didn't get an error over here because that really is my answer. I wish these more simple calculators made it a little bit more obvious, but if you see an E on the screen, E is error, things are not going well. Oh, I wonder what the phone does, because I know a lot of you use your phone for everything. So let's just see. All right, so if I do, let's do 10 divided by zero, see what, ah, perfect. So it gives you a big old error saying, hey, you can't do that. That's how you know it's undefined. And if you go the other way, zero divided by eight, just spits out zero, no error, no nothing, because that is just the answer, okay? So that's good to know. All righty. Gosh, Miss Sabia, I wish that there was a convenient way for me to remember all of this. <gasps> but there is. And some of you, I know if you had me last semester, you know this already, but maybe you had another teacher, maybe they didn't teach you this. So allow me to show you the fun of hoi vux. Savia. Yes. Are we going to be using the symbols for undefined and zero, or are we not? Like, I'm not sure what symbols you're talking about. Like, do you not know the symbols for the undefined and zero? Um, no, I don't think so. Underline U. 
or is above you. I forgot what it was. It was like the thing above you, or it's a zero. You cross the zero out. Oh, so this, that right there? That and also the other one. What's the other one? I think it's like the undefined is zero, like the is you, and then over it was a, uh, a line. Like that? Like that, something like that. I remember learning that like last year or something like that. I, to be honest with you, I've never, I, I've never seen this before. This um, usually means the null set. So it means like there are no solutions. So usually that's what we mean when there's no solution. But undefined is a little bit different than having no solution. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. I've honestly never seen this one. And this one, I've we use it, but not. I I don't think he ever use it in slope. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. We do use it for other things, but not. Um, I can't think of. I can't think of seeing it used for slope, though. Good question, though. Yeah, so I'm just gonna stick to zero and undefined. All right, so let me talk to you about your new best friends, Hoy and Vux, in case you don't know. So I know it seems weird at first. So I'm going to spell them out for you. Hoy is just H-O-Y, and then Vux is V-U-X, like tux, but with a V instead. Now, what in the world are these? This is so strange. I tell you what, this is another thing that I learned from a student years ago. I had no idea. They were taking some sort of a test or a quiz or something, and, and I saw this written on the side of the paper, and I was like, oh, what is this? She called me some kind of name or something? Turns out, no, not at all. It's actually a really nice way to sort of organize all of the information that goes with horizontal and vertical lines. So let me show you how this works. The first letter here, H or V, this just tells you if you're going to have a horizontal line or a vertical line. Oh, looks like that green is not showing up at all. Hang on, let me, let me get a better color here. Let's try purple. So this first letter, will just be how your line goes. So this is your line. Is it going to be horizontal? Or vertical? The second letter conveniently tells you This is your slope. So you can either have a slope of zero. I know it's an O, but we are using a zero there, or you would be undefined. And then this last letter refers to your equation. So this would be a y equals and an x equals. So I put a box here. This last letter is your equation. We're going to be dealing more with the equation part tomorrow. Um, but for now, we can kind of just focus on these first two letters. If you have a horizontal line, you automatically know that its slope is zero. If you have a vertical line, you automatically know that its slope is undefined. That's kind of how this works. These three go together. Let me use another. So you have these three that are related. Vertical, undefined, is always x equals. And then you have these three that are related. Horizontal has a slope of zero, and it's always y equals whatever, some number. Okay, so hoi bucks, really easy thing to remember. 
uh, just those letters, H-O-Y-V-U-X. I'm going to be saying it a lot. Every time there's a horizontal or a vertical line, you're going to hear me saying hoy Vox. Every time I get a slope and it turns out to be either zero or under find, I'm going to be talking hoy Vox. Anytime, you know, in the future where we have an equation that's just y equals some number or x equals some number, I'm going right to hoy Vox. Why? Because it helps us organize everything and sort of understand what we're talking about here. So let's try some and see if we can sort of put this all together. So if I did, um, I'm going to give you a couple lines here, and I'm going to ask you, what's the slope? So let's just try this with a graph. What's the slope? Hold on, I should be using a different color. I'll do one more for good measure. Okay, so if I was going to ask you the slope of each of these four, so take a look at how I do this first one. I look at this and I'm like, oh, I have a vertical line. So if I go up to my hoy vox, V is for vertical. That means it has to have an undefined slope. That's how easy this is. So if I have, they're always going to give you one of these bits of information. Once you have one of them, you know the others. So if I know I have a vertical line, I know its slope is undefined. I could go the other way too. If I knew that the slope is undefined, that means I must have a vertical line. Isn't that neat? So that first one has just got to be, since it's vertical, hoy vux, that's an undefined slope. Okay, try the second one. Now you have a horizontal line, so its slope has just got to be Shout it out for me. Yeah, zero, right? Horizontal, hoy, H-O-Y, O is zero. Okay, and then try these last two, three and four. Slope of the red lines here. Okay, so that slope on number three is? Let me get my popsicle sticks here. Oh, I got one in the chat. Let's see. Lorenzo, what must the slope of number three be right here? Uh-oh, I lost Lorenzo. Okay, well, he can't answer me then. Zoe, you can. What must the slope of this one be? Uh, yes. Yeah, so if it's vertical, it's going to have that U from Vux tells me it's undefined. And lastly, number four, what is the slope of that thing? Ryan's not here, so he can't answer me. But, uh, Jeremy, you can. What must the slope of this one be? No, zero. Yes, zero. If it's horizontal, that's H-O-Y. That O stands for zero. Perfect. Okay, good. So, 
if you have a horizontal or vertical line, you know the slopes just that easy. Um, I do just want to show, there is a little bit of a shortcut that I just want to make you aware of. Just because it's going to save you so much time if you realize it. And maybe you found it already. I don't know. Let's see. So let's go back to when I'm asking you to just find the slope. Find slope between A and B. Let's have A at 2 comma 7 and B at uh, negative one comma seven. There's a shortcut. Oh, sorry. There's a shortcut to just know the answer right now. I can look at this and I just know, I know the answer. I'll give you a hint. It does. That's Hoy Vox is still helping me here. Hoy Vox. So yeah, the Y's are the same. Right? Does everybody see that? See how the Y's are the same? If the Y, if I notice that I have either the X is the same or the Y is the same, that's a clue that it's going to be a hoi buck situation. If the Y's are exactly the same, that means I'm dealing with Y equals. So my slope, I can just look right here. It's just going to be a zero. Yep, if you, my X's had been the same, then it would be a VUX situation and I would have had an undefined slope. So if you happen to notice, oh, look at that. Look, I either have X's or Y's the same, then you know it's a hoi VUX situation. You can just jump right here. Since it's the Y's that are the same, oh, my slope here is just zero. Isn't that neat? Now, if you don't recognize that, though, and you actually go through the motions and do out all the math, you're still going to get the right answer. But if you realize, oh, I can just look at that. So try this one. Um, what if it was like, I don't know, 4, negative 2, and 4, 7. And I asked for the slope between these two lines. If you're, if you're watching for this little shortcut, you know the answer almost immediately. Yeah, this one's got to be undefined. So when I realize that I have two that are the same, right? And it has to be both X's or both Y's. It doesn't matter if you have an X and a Y the same. That really doesn't mean anything. I need both X's the same or both Y's. So since I have both X's, that's how I know it's a hoi Vux situation. And then I look, oh, okay, it's the X's that are the same. So that means my slope is undefined. Oh, my gosh, that's so convenient. Again, if you don't realize it, you can go through the math and you'll still get undefined as an answer. But what a convenient shortcut. Now, don't get tripped up if I do something like this. Let's let's do one where the those like I don't know, something like this. You don't have I don't care that these two are the same. That doesn't really mean anything. If I had this, there's no these this isn't a hoy buck situation. I don't have these that are the same or these that are the same. So I'm just gonna have to do like you did on the fast five today, and I'm just gonna have to do it out y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is just normal, right? I just end up getting three. This is not a horizontal or a vertical line. It's just a regular line. Okay, so don't forget the normal lines still exist. Sometimes we sort of fall into this trap of um, whatever we're working on. We think that that's the only thing in existence, but they're not, right? So on your test, like I'm going to mix them all together. So sometimes you're just going to have to do it out and you get some number. Sometimes it's going to be like this, though, and you could save yourself a little bit of time if you just look for having matching X's or matching Y's. Save you a little bit of time. Okay. Does anybody have any questions right now? So I think I've covered everything I needed to. Okay. 
Well, everybody's all right? Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna actually stop this video right here.